Are we ready to record? Yeah, you're on. No, man. Like, as, turn as of, 98. As of now. Won the lottery. Got the next day. It's a black fly. Chardonnay. It's a death row pardon. Two minutes too late. And isn't it ironic? Don't you think? It's like Ray, yeah, when it's free ride. <laughs> when you're always the pain, it's good by us that you just can't take. And who would have thought it figured, well, I'm not Lemon here, as uh, Judy Zig <laughs> and that guy Grip playing a 1v1 random first time in a while. I am the referee, and uh, we'll see what they pull out of the hat here. Again, we are not playing builds from the hat uh, this week, so anything is available to them. Any cheese, any build, anything goes, except no thumbs to the eye or kicks to the groin. Oh, uh, now I gotta put my kick to the groin build away. Yep. Uh, so, pretty obvious here on this map where everyone is. Uh, 1v1 map. I don't know the name of it. Ohana. Uh, sure, Ohana Lu. I didn't even see what you picked. Because uh, you were too busy laughing at the I, I think I was. I was a little. Uh, I guess the word I'm going for is probably distracted. I was gonna say bemused. Oh, sure, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about, but anyway. Um, so, seeing uh, interesting... Well, no, actually, you know what? There's nothing interesting here. This is exactly bog standard play. Bog standard? Bog standard. That's bog. what it is. You're going to be in a bog. you gotta, you got to have standards. You can't just Absolutely. be having a willy-nilly in a bog. <laughs> there is that. Oh, it's not in... <laughs> Wrong key. These are important. And Zig is at a disadvantage because he doesn't have a uh, LED lit gaming keyboard like Griff. That's right. I'm not wearing my, my gunner optics right now, though. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Is the beta carotene going to be enough? Not sure. Yep. So we got some scouting going on here. Scouting them things. may have been seen. It's pretty early at this stage, if, you know, if you're doing a scout. Um, you can probably pick up whether there's a cheese or not uh, for, you know, for gold or silver. Maybe, maybe you can, smartass. But, uh, no, no, I, I mean, can. You, can, you can tell if it's proxy racks or something. But, uh, oh, has someone found? I, I think, yes. So, speaking of cheese, someone has found a conveniently placed pylon that was left behind. Uh, devotes five workers to kill it. I'm not sure if I'd agree with that because there's obviously no work in at this stage of the game. But, you know, you do need to take that out. You don't want any fun surprises. Uh, Waiting for that. Waiting for that. Um, you know, so I'm not sure if that was just, you know... for that uh, cannon rush. Yeah, a cannon there. rush. Or just, you know, a sneaky sneak pylon. We know uh, Griff is very fond of cells in the mineral line. And because I've said this, I'm sure if we play 1v1, he'll try the big against me. Um, so, you know, good to, good to have spotted that before nothing bad happens. And also, unfortunately for Griff, spotted the other bit of uh, sneaky sneak play there. It wasn't it with sneaky him. sneak so much as it was that he didn't let me out of his base. Passing sneaky sneak. Yeah, take that. I'm forcing you to look at all my stuff. So, a uh, little bit of a waste of 100 minerals there uh, for Mr. Griff, but, you know, learned some things, distracted uh, Mr. Zig, and uh, lost some mining time, I guess. So. Oh, crap. Base is under attack. Not enough energy. And the oh. Reaper is spotted. Uh, is he gonna? Oh, he hops up and down. Yep, I'm being all sneaky. Check me out. Oh, oh, okay. So he uh, he kind of escapes there, does a little scout, and uh, he's on the way out. None the worse for wear. Am I? Good. I stopped looking. Yes, because as we know, Reapers regenerate health when not in motion. I uh, wasn't able to really deny 
you know, mineral collection or whatnot there at Griff Phase 1. But, you know, did gain some intel. Uh, got in, got out, no, no casualties. So not a, not a total loss. Um, obviously, uh, Griff plays Protoss as his primary race. Sig's gotten a lot better with Terran. That's, but uh, he not still really helping hates me at this moment. Very much hates it. Um, so we'll, we'll see. He's had some luck with the, you know, T and A move, um, which most Terran players deny is a thing, but totally is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, see how that goes. That that would be what I'm expecting. Uh, I'm doubting we'll see some crazy battle cruiser build or anything. Can tell. Uh, Mr. Reaper finally dies, but uh, so does a zealot. And uh, some oh, reinforcements two. here for okay. Griff. Oh, uh, catches one ring. Uh, another one dies. So uh, not, a, not a perfect trade there. But uh, not anything grievous at this stage. Does see the expansion probably. Uh, interesting tale of the tape as far as resource collection goes. Um, different uh, differing priorities and whatnot there. Uh oh, that's not good. And I think uh, some other people are also having some pathing issues, some weird things going on. Um, yeah, a couple kind of forgotten units. Uh, uh, uh. Upgrade complete. Uh, some interesting uh, build strategies here. I think uh, I think the players are operating on different time scales that they, <laughs> that they want to play this I'm game. Kind of geological. I don't mean that so much as when people are preparing to move out. I'm seeing uh, definitely indications of very different approaches there. Okay, the, um, the thing here probably, you know, Griff, this is his main race. Um, you know, probably feeling pretty comfortable with his build. He hasn't had serious pressure to throw him off. There they are. Um, for Zig, you know, it's kind of do something unconventional, get Griff off his game, and hopefully explode his mat is, is what he's going to do. Oh. So to that end, he tried to ah. the here. Uh, he takes out the sentry quickly, which is kind of a loss, and... Uh, yeah, not a not a bad trade. Uh, Griff doesn't manage to do anything to those buildings. Um, push here may or may not work. Hard to say. Takes down a zealot. Uh, that other zealot's going to do some damage. Uh, more warped in. This is not going to be a favorable exchange at this point. Uh, Hellion with one kill and one HP left. Valiant veteran. I was not and, uh, expecting the front. I'm not sure about... Okay, hits the photon overcharge. Hellion dies immediately. Oh, bring a boy? I was going to say bring the boys, but I think there was only one there. He brought yeah, there's not too, too yeah, many of Just them. for companionship. Um, I, I think maybe that was a mistake in terms of the push. Like, uh, getting a bit, bit over eager there with Wait, not oh. quite enough resources to make a... <laughs> you have not enough minerals. Kind of stalemate here, so basically the question is, you know, does Zig have enough to really push the tempo and make a dent here, or is he facing a, a turtle toss that's settled in onto base and the game is just not going to go? Yep. <laughs> Probably a lot of terrible things yeah. here. Oh, pretty, one, one already. That's GG. Yeah. <laughs> Game two, you see Mopi versus that guy Griff on Belshir Vestige. 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 I think it's Vestige. I think it's Vestige. I don't think it is. There is much prestige on the Vestige. Haven't you ever heard that the, uh, the Marines talk about though, that? But it's nope. a Vestigial. Well, then it would be called Belshir Vestigial. That's just stupid. No, the root of the... <laughs> Anywho, they've both gone random. As is our plan today for rock, paper, scissors. So we'll see what's going on. Uh, the exciting part here is that I can hit all kinds of buttons. And there's their names. There's this. Uh, I don't really need to... Well, I, I suppose I can get rid of that. Ooh, I can even zed my way out. Woo! And we can see everything. 
So here we have UCMOP, and uh, over here we have that guy Griff. I believe it's a two-player map, so it's not uh, super spoiler for me to say that we have UCMOP in the bottom right and that guy Griff in the top left. I don't think. What? I'm in the top left? You're in the top left. If no! you look on your mini-map, just down to your bottom left, you're going to see... and politically. Although, uh, it probably is a spoiler for me to say that Griff is uh, starting out with a build of the four-gas build. It's a very... What? It's a very, Man, uh, it was so risky, and now you've given it away. Huge, huge risk because you got to run down to the lower, to the to the natural, and grab those two gas right away, even before, because you can't be wasting time making any actual um, workers, because you have to save up that 80, 75 minerals. Is it seventy eighty minerals? It depends on the race, I think, for the assimilators or um, hatch gases. What are those called? <laughs> Um, probably not that. <laughs> what are they called? Ref refineries? That's amazing. Well, refineries, like yeah. Assimil assimilator, it. refinery, and, you know, the hatch gas. <laughs> God. Total hatch gas. You know, You're a real things. hatch gas. I'm, to I'm totally a hatch gas. So the four gas is definitely going to work in Griff's favor here. Uh, you see Mopi. Going for the the macro, the macro base within the base. He's actually got a wall. He might throw his macro. A, a full on wall of bases for all of the workers to return the minerals back to. So that's certainly going to work out quite well because then if the workers have multiple options of a route back home, then that's you know if, if you sort of say, hey, I want to deliver this parcel, but. I have to deliver this parcel to a bank. It doesn't say which bank, so really, I could just leave it on the doorstep of anyone I choose. Yeah, and that's I'd really like to, how that uh, how that methodology is going. I'd out. like to point out for our viewers. So this is the epitome of Silver League or Bronze League play. Um, basically, I had a build in mind, and then I kind of wasn't paying attention and built too many things to really do that build. Oh, speaking and, of paying uh, attention, and uh, then I had to do another build. Look at this hero. Because, uh, this hero here is is uh, putting in some work. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, that's certainly going to be quite a number. However, I'm not... Oh, well, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident about this Overlord's ability to slowly float away <laughs> from these two guys with powerful machine guns. Speaking of two guys with powerful machine guns, let's just have a look and see what's going up uh, way back here in the main, as we can now reveal that Griff's forecast build is actually a Terran build, and the macro hatch with the wall of six hatcheries is UCMPs. They both know which race they're working that is a nice maneuver. Oh, and we got uh, the two bases just sort of shouting at each other from the mountains as you come down here sort of the, to the cliff top and you just shout across and you say, how many dudes have you got? And then you yell back, I'm not telling. And plus, mom says I have to go back in in a half hour, so we should probably make this snowball fight happen sooner rather than later. And that's that's effectively how this, this battle is going. Oh, some bad news bears right there, as I do believe that this guy will root himself into the ground before such time as these four heroes are going to be able to do anything about that. And they, in fact, the four heroes are now down to three heroes. However, I'm fairly certain they will find some more friends somewhere here on the map and things will, uh, things will go well. Um, yeah, that's, ooh, that's, that's a telling sign as you bring up the old EPM just for fun. Uh, meantime, we have a very excitable... Zergling, trying to, trying to make his way up here into Terran land. He decides he wants to be a Terran. He doesn't want to be an infested marine. He just wants to be, like, you know, someone's pet. Sort of say, hey, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm domesticated. I will totally attack this, this supply depot that you, that you wish me to until you shoot me with bullets. So, good job on the training. It's, it's a cute trick. It's useful at parties. Other times, it's just sort of a tragedy. Because you don't really want to... You, you don't want to be that guy who invites everyone over to his house and then says things like, Hey, want to see my pet die? Unless you own a phoenix. And then, you know, you just, that experience? just having a phoenix is probably pretty cool. You don't need to do a trick with it. But that's just me, and I'm, I'm pretty easily impressed. You know, I, I could come over and you could say that you had a guinea pig, and I'd probably be just as impressed as if you had a phoenix. I don't get out much. Oh man, how does that work? <laughs> I think you'll 
find you need to reverse the flow in the transflange modulator. Ah, uh, but I brought I only brought one direction of transflange modulator. No, but it needs me. to transflange. You can't have omnidirect or unidirectional flange. How's well, that supposed a, to that's work? That's the only direction of flange I brought. <laughs> Uni? Yeah. Can you tell me which direction the flange is going in? Good lord, no. I'm it's no just science. uni in one of them. It's got 360 degrees to choose from. How hard can it be? I'm no scientist. I fear tragedy may happen. Oh, do you want to come over to my house and check out my bed? Oh, God, he's dead already. That was another good trick. He found another four Marines. Apparently, the three Marines did meet up with a pal. And in meeting up with the pal, that one pal was apparently yet another dude who thinks that killing your own pets for the amusement of your company is a fun party game. It's okay, because they live in Yonkers. It's funny, because people who live in Yonkers do terrible things to their pets. Read a paper! <laughs> <laughs> um... Hmm. I think I'd had to play Zerg because I think it's literally been months. You're, uh, you're, the last time we were rock paper scissors, but you're, you're doing a little dancing here with your with your units. Are they are they kind of trying to choose which which direction to go in? They're not quite ready to to do things yet. I'm still thinking about it. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Because I totally forget how to do any of the things. Now they're going back in the other direction. Maybe they'll go back in the first direction again. You gonna walk back? Over here, over here, come on, right over here. Do, 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 do. Oh, all right. They don't want to play. They don't want to play with my mouse cursor. Maybe it's because they can't actively see it. Maybe it's because they're being controlled by someone else. Oh, and here's another pet who's going to die. Oh, do you want to come over and see my floating orb? Oh, no, it's dead. Oh, that was a fun game. Hey, how's the weather in Yonkers? I think they're going to pick up on... Can you get to that? Nope. Come on. It's, 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 it's right there. Go, go. Ooh, well, that's intriguing. I am the only one who can see this right now. Oh, no, now I've read it. Cool. All right, a little bit of engagement here. We've got some bullets fighting against some acid spray. So it's good you don't want to be sitting in the middle unless you can be invisible. In which case, you can blow things up, and those things don't have much to say about it. In the meantime, this little uh, green invisible space is going to get populated. Boom, there you go. Ever. Some other thing that's happening is... Uh, I some... forget how to play Zerg, you guys. A little, bit of, a little bit of floaty McFloats. So the floaty floats are booging about. Do you know what I'm impressed by? I am impressed by the low uh, mineral and gas count. You know? Because you guys are... You're, you're doing quite well for the for the harvesters. These being two mostly off races. Is that is that too much to say? I, I think that would be an accurate statement. Oh, that'd be accurate. All right, so we're off racing. Um, yep. And just a couple of a couple of dim and D's. Exciting. I'm wondering. Ah, nope. I'm not wondering anymore. Hmm. Okay. Yep. Some uh, some precautions. Getting getting put in place here. Mm. <laughs> yeah, those are those are defensive structures. Trust me, totally defensive structures right there. And yeah, that's very even, rather even income game, which is cool. Let me spread out in a moment, but I think. There was certainly, in, in the last battle, if I, if I bring up the units lost, well, it's not quite as one-sided as, as you would have expected from that last battle. But perhaps that was just that there were fewer units involved than I thought. So it has not fully swayed in one direction or t'other. This, uh, this little device, the Zelnaga Tower, continues to spray its little cloud of blue into the, into the sky. So are these, are Zelnaga Towers supposed to be naturally occurring? No, oh, the Zelnaga is a race. So they put these towers here. Yeah. And then the humans just take advantage of them by saying, Ooh, oh no. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. 
Oh, good. You have an army. Mm, yep. Hmm. It's difficult not to say things, but to say things, but so. So let's just start making stuff up. The Ultralisks are on their way uh, as uh, UCMLP has gained the ability, the upgrade in the ultra, ultra in the secondary Ultralisk den to give them wings. So these slow-moving flying Ultralisks are still only about, oh, I'd say about 9, 10 pixels outside the main base, and they should get there right around the 45-minute mark. If nothing interrupts them, obviously. And of course, the only thing that can interrupt them is some of these battle cruisers which are going around in the opposite direction, so they're not actually going to meet up with the Ultralisks. So, but the battle cruisers do move a little bit faster, and the only thing that they can come up against is the 3-3 Hydralisk army, which is being built out of the 5th base by UCMOP, right up here in the top right corner. So, having just this tiny little engagement here in the middle, where the Ultralists are not quite going to make it, nor the Battle Cruisers, or the 3 3 Hydralists. Marauders doing pretty well against these Roaches, and I think the battle is going to be decided by these Medivacs. A few more units just running into the fray here. Uh, Griff is a little worried, probably, about having enough vision to destroy creep tumors, perhaps? Doesn't have any ravens with him. Not really gonna be a big deal, as they'll be on their way momentarily. And they do have the extended, the added Thermal upgrade S. to, yeah, to, uh, to drop. I was about to say to drop the Colossus right in, into the battle, to, to warp in the Colossus. So warped in Colossus from the, uh, from the ravens is a little bit OP. I have, I have mentioned this, but... Over on my over on my subreddit slash r slash stuff Ross thinks about StarCraft, but no one else cares about. And it's pending because they keep telling me that the title is too long. Meantime, it's kind of just a little uh, a little dance, a little group up back and forth. This is, I believe, yeah, that's oh, no, you're wrong. Because I thought I knew what that was for, but I am evidently wrong. Hmm. So, battle cruisers deciding to stay back at home, as they are very well aware of the defensive capabilities of creep. In fact, if uh, if you didn't know, unless you get the undercoating on the battle cruisers floating over top of the creep actually does become poisonous to them which is which is unfortunate so that actually does damage over time and quite a fair amount of damage over time at the same um, sort of a, at, at the same rate as you would expect a army of SCVs to run into about six or seven colossus Nearest makes no difference I'd say maybe about six possibly a seven on the damageometer you can now see as uh, the damageometer is yet one of the other buildings that UCMOP is building back in his natural because he didn't want it to be susceptible to air attacks in May. And of course, when you click on the damageometer, then that just means that every building then becomes an offensive building, all the, and being Zerg, all the legs crawl out from the side. And just eat, eat through it all, and just start destroying as many units as possible. Speaking of as many units as possible, I'm not really sure what's going to emerge. Ah, three roaches. Here we are, the emergence of three roaches. Followed by the submergence of three roaches. And the destruction of the Night Sky. I think that might be it for the Zerg in this game. Not to be all soothsay and whatnot, we're in my, my burlap sack and telling of end times. 
<laughs> many, many of the nidus. All of them nidus. <laughs> okay, because it's got, it's got two roaches in Woo! it. <laughs> Your right, game color three monitor is wrong. Game three, wrong. Kingdom. Game everything three. is wrong. Game three, we have the rubber match. Um, the runner-ups, see who can go uh, unwinning today. Who cannot win a match? We will find out. It's whoever gets the crappier, um, the crappier random race. Yeah, look at that. Oh, I have that. Let's, uh, let's make that go away. Uh, yep. We got Ziggy uh, in Ziggy's base playing uh, Ziggy Race, and we got uh, UCMOP down in UCMOP's base playing um, a UCMOP race. And let's, um, we got some typing going on. Let's check the old APM. We got, um, we got, oh, we're peaking at 15, but we're back down to 12. Um, UCMOP is averaging 23. Uh, really? I just just did nothing and stared at my monitor for you, a couple seconds. You understand? <laughs> no, that's your average. Your average. 23 APM is you do something every three seconds. No, he's totally spamming. Um, Ziggy's uh, got 18. Um, we're not... No damn straight! Well, I just Ziggy instantaneously bursted up to 30 for a moment. Yep. Oh, there he goes. 156! What? <laughs> I can't repel firepower of that magnitude. I'm just spamming for no reason. Oh, okay. And we'll do a little bit of this. So we'll look we'll at go back here. We see, uh, we see some things. Space shark! Uh, you okay uh, there, Jimmy? <laughs> this is Jimmy. I I'm read you. I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> Wrong quote. All right. Uh, he sees that he's Zerg. He moves for the expand. Uh oh. Whoa! Dang it! I was hoping that would get by and he wouldn't see it. Can oh, he... me too. Believe me. Me too. What happens? Nothing for me, I don't think. I don't know. I, you might have this. I really hope not. Yeah, but they're taking literally half an hour to get there. Well, yeah, that's true. But, it, you know, just start... put two on like, each You should have Thors by the time they get into space. Put three on each um, uh, thing. Yeah, there you go. No. You know, funds it. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. The good news is, is I think you might. Oh my gosh! Oh, the oh my gosh! The clutch! Yeah! Oh, and he just leaves. <laughs> Doesn't even try to transition. He just calls it. Oh. Failed six pool is a failed six pool. Against Ziggy though. I'm so glad I scouted. <laughs> You almost missed it too when you turned really away. Did. You turned away at the creep, and I was like, "Holy mm. crap! He's the zerglings are gonna get by." Wow! No, but I saw them run by, so I got really lucky that I saw them run. Oh by. yeah, no, that's well because they were about to pop. I was like, "Oh, he's gonna go in the base, and he's gonna see the zerglings pop." And no, and then you turned around. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, this could still happen!" Yay, level eleven, Terran. <laughs> Le level level in. Yay, I got a portrait of a widow mine. Now I can be the HAL 9000. If you watch any of this, leave us a comment down below. Send an email to contact at lime.lemon.com. You can follow us on Twitter at notlemon. There's plenty more where that came from.